Welcome to another segment of the Spiritual Revival Hours. I am Maria Cabrera. I am your host for today for this very special show, and I'm also your councilwoman at large. Today, it is my honor to be here hosting this program with our special guests. We are doing a program on the legacy of Dr. Mayor James H. Sills Jr. Most recently, we gathered to celebrate Mayor Sills with the unveiling of the statue that can be found at the Washington Street Bridge and South Park Drive. It was certainly a momentous day. Everyone came, the hierarchy was there to give Mayor Sills his honors and his flowers while he is still with us. So today I welcome Dr. Mayor James H. Sills, his son, Mark Sills, and our most special guests that are gonna talk a little bit about their relationships with Mayor Sills, the Bishop Morton. We are honored to have her here today. And my good friend and colleague throughout the years, Naila Gilliam. Welcome everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So to start out with, let's talk a little bit about the statue because that's that was what just happened. Mayor Sills, what was that moment like for you to be there? I know you spoke and you felt like they were making a big to do, but because you, you're such a humble person through the years that I've known you, but what was your take on the whole day? What did that mean to you? Well, it was, um, it was surprising in many ways. Um, I didn't know a statute was planned uh, until someone told me that uh, Senator Darius Brown had introduced a resolution to the General Assembly Bond Committee to financially support the funding of a statute for me. I hadn't talked to Senator Brown beforehand. I had no idea that's what he was thinking about until after he got it approved by the bond committee. And I said to myself, boy, I don't think that's going any place beyond the bond committee. And lo and behold, it did go beyond the bond committee. Yes. Darius got it submitted to the General Assembly and they approved it. Yes. I'm amazed that it was done. I'm happy to get that kind of uh, recognition. I want to thank Darius and all the others at the General Assembly who voted to fund this project. And I feel fortunate to uh, have people who, who choose to give me uh, my dues while I'm here. Yes, and I feel an fortunate to have so many friends who support the idea of a statute. Although I recognize that uh, there are many people in this city who deserve a statute as well. Many of my good friends who are no longer with us, such as Senator Herman H. Holloway, mm -hmm. Representative Al O'Plant, uh, Jim Baker, many others who have done Jim Gilliam great Senior. things in Jim this Gilliam. city. So I feel fortunate to have been chosen for this honor, but grateful that uh, to receive it. Thank you very much. And certainly very deserving. And real quick, on a personal note, um, you had mentioned the family. Talk a little bit about the family who was in town that day. Maria, I had so many people that I haven't seen in years who came to this event from New Jersey, Texas, California, North Carolina. Uh, it was like a mini homecoming mm -hmm. uh, that I had so many uh, family members to be present. And uh, we talked about doing this on a more regular basis and renewing our relationships. Relationships often get uh, neglected when you live in different cities and you only see each other all too often when the, when you have funerals or mm -hmm. other major events. 
Uh, but that was important that uh, so many of my family members came to the unveiling. And you have a beautiful family. You had mentioned at the lunch that people came from 10 different states to be there with you. And you did say that, that it was important that we start getting together more often, not just wait for a funeral or sometimes if we're lucky, a happy occasion. And I think if anything, the pandemic and COVID has shown us that um, we're here today and gone tomorrow that, you know, this thing we call life is frail. So um, that was a beautiful moment for you. Uh, Lisa, our Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester read notes from the President of the United States. Of course, the congressional delegation was there and many other leaders. So it certainly was a very special event. And uh, I was just so happy to be there myself. Now, Mark, um, you were mentioning something about the history of your dad. So let's go into your history, Mayor Seals, coming to Delaware. I want to let Mark tell us a little bit about that. What brought, you know, I guess what brought your dad here and what are some of the things that he has done that has led up to this moment? Yes, my dad was presented with a job opportunity uh, to come to Wilmington to be um, a person who worked at family court. He was a probation officer. Also, a lot of people don't know my dad is a so was a social worker by trade. He, he originally was a social worker and a probation officer, and he enjoyed working with families and he enjoyed working with kids and he enjoyed helping the community. And that, that was his passion. So what led, if you recall the conversations to him to run to public office when he first ran? Well, I was told by different people that- you were the little one, you're the youngest. <laughs> yes, I was, I'm one of the youngest, that uh, he was urged by different community leaders to get involved in politics because they saw something in him. They saw his leadership skills, they saw his people skills. And I was told by several people that different leaders in the community urged him to get involved in politics. We're so grateful that they yes. did. So Mayor Seals, what was your first elected role? I was elected in uh, 1968. Uh, I was encouraged by a number of people to run for the city council at large position in 1968. I had not planned to run for office. I came to Wilmington with no idea at all of running for office. Uh, but some people said in 1968, look, this is something you should do. We haven't had anyone to run and be elected to a citywide at large office. So I chose to do it because of support that I got from a lot of people. Uh, and uh, fortunately I won in 1968. Um, and then some years later, uh, some of those same people said, you ought to run for mayor. And well, I- Weren't you a state representative before you ran for mayor? I was a state representative. I was a state representative for 10 years. I enjoyed being a state representative. I didn't want to leave that position. Uh, I was in, I ran for re-election five times and had no opposition for either time that I ran. And I wanted to keep that position. I enjoyed it. Uh, it was a challenge. But others said you should strive for something higher. And uh, some people uh, got together and hired a, a pollster, mm -hmm. someone from an organization outside of the city to uh, do a poll. And the poll results said, if you run, and if you're running just against the incumbent, you probably will get somewhere between 52 and 55% of the votes. Those are good numbers. I ran, <laughs> and I got 53.4% of the so, votes. So that pollster was worth its money. Yeah. So let's talk about the relationships with the, our other guests that are here. Dr. Morton, let's start with you. So when did you start uh, engaging with the then uh, state representative or councilman at large? At, at what point did your relationship begin with um, Mayor Sills? 
I think mine began with um, him running for <laughs> mayor. I, politics, I never um, got involved with. Uh, didn't like it, really. Still don't like it. But he was someone who um, seemed to be, and still is till this day, uh, filled with humility, um, you know, concerned about the people, uh, love people. You have to love people in order to do um, the things that that you do. So, um, and and I I enjoyed at that time. I I thought about it the minute I saw where the statue was going to be unveiled. My mind started racing, uh, and uh, I commenced to think about me running around at 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 1994. I was a little quicker than mm -hmm. I am now, <laughs> and we uh, all were. <laughs> you know, banging on doors, and and the people would say, "Rev, you gonna vote for him?" And I'd say, "Yeah," and they say, "Well, I'm gonna vote for him too." And, so you uh, really were one of the instrumental people to help us get to where yeah, we were. And yeah. our next segment, um, Doc, uh, Reverend Moore, I mean, she was Reverend, she was pastor, and she is the bishop. <laughs> We've learned the history, the evolution of Reverend of okay. Bishop Morton. Right. But I heard somebody call Just her doctor. don't call me too late for dinner. <laughs> don't call all her right. too late for dinner. Yeah. But we're going to come back because we want to continue to hear okay. about your interactions with Mayor Sills. And then we're going to have Naila Gilliam talk a little bit about how we got into the election and getting him elected okay. as mayor. So we're going to return and we're now going to talk about the steps that were taken to get us to where uh, he became mayor of Wilmington. And we'll return again with this segment in the Spiritual Revival Hours as we interview and celebrate Dr. Mayor James H. Sills, Jr. About eight years ago, on the 8th of this month, eight years ago, my sister and I rushed in from Memphis, Tennessee, stood by the bedside of my mom. And how so furiously she was breathing. Shh. We stood there and watched her take her last breath. And the best friend that I had with blood in their body had just left me laying right there. Young folk, if you're privileged tonight to have a good mother, I don't care if she's an alcoholic, she's still your mama. Hello, somebody. And whether your mom respect you or not, you got to always respect your mother. Always! Let me share this song with you, because I tell you, I feel a dance working on me already. And it doesn't take me long to get uh, all spiritually riled up. I want y'all to kind of get some move about it, too. There you go, there you go. Amen.
Attention everyone on Medicare. New Medicare Advantage plans are now available. Did you know that you may be eligible for additional Medicare-approved benefits that include free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free meal delivery, free rides to medical appointments, and much more? The Medicare Benefits Hotline is now open. Just call the toll-free number on your screen now to see if you qualify for additional Medicare benefits and make sure you're getting all the benefits you deserve. Just call 800-520-3805 now. In addition to dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage, you may also qualify for $0 monthly premiums, $0 deductibles, and no copays. Just call the toll-free number on your screen now to see if you're eligible for additional Medicare benefits that may include free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free meal delivery, free rides to medical appointments, and much more. The call and Medicare benefits review are absolutely free. There's no obligation to enroll. Just call 800-520-3805 to see if you qualify. They come to make you strong. Floating on the sea of trouble. Sorrow falling like rain from the sky. Trotting through life's murky waters. Trials form the tears in your eyes. Don't. Telling you there's a blessing on the other side of food. Mm. We know it's cold, but we're on fire. This tax season, nobody beats Brandy Wine. Nobody. It's an all out price war. You haven't seen prices on furniture, mattresses, rugs, accessories. Anywhere, nor will you anywhere, we'd love you to shop around, because this tax season, nobody beats Brandywine Furniture. Welcome back to the Spiritual Revival Hours, and with us today, we have Dr. Mayor James H. Sills, Jr., as we talk about the celebration of his legacy here in the city of Wilmington. With me today, we have his son, Mark Sills, Naila Gilliam, and the Bishop Morton. And we're going to continue with Bishop Morton as she was telling us about her involvement um, when Mayor Sills got elected and the work that was done to get him to that place. Yeah, um... As as I was saying, it was it was just such a an exciting time, um, you know, to to be the first African American, uh, you know, and all of that. Uh, Wilmington is 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 my home, and of course, everything that happens um, naturally, I I just kind of feel it's my responsibility to help do what needs to be done. And uh, as a result, I, like I say, you know, we banged on doors and we did a little bit of everything um, to get him elected. Um, so my- There was my, a lot with voter registration as well, I oh, believe, at yeah. that time. Oh yeah, all of, everything that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm somebody that, there's a lot of stuff in between that has to be done. But when it comes to running my mouth, um, that's what I do best. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was better for me to run and knock on doors than it was to try to do anything else, you know, because I could put on a pair of jeans and sneakers and turn my cap backwards and you know sometimes people knew who I was and sometimes they didn't but when when they recognized me you know the the truth of the matter is they said well if you going to vote for him he must be all right and I'm going to vote for him you were a that's, trusted that's voice it. in the community yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh then after you know he got um elected he visited my church more than just at election time. He would come and, and sit with the, the children. Sometime I'd have 75, 80 children sitting around him and they were excited because they were sitting with the, the, the mayor 
of the city. Um, and, and so, and he would be excited uh, because I think the first time that I called him up, you know, to sit in front of the congregation, uh, that was exciting for him. So it just, it made a difference. It allowed them, the kids to see a first, you know, and, and he uh, looked like the children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and uh, I mean it was necessary yep. for me. Mm -hmm. It was necessary. So I'm on five generations. So whatever generation he came in on, they met him, you know, before anybody else did. So it's a good thing. It's not about who this and that and the other. Um, he did what he did while he was in office. Uh, he made so many of us proud. You know, I don't know nothing else to say. He inspired a community is yes, what he did, yes. uh, Bishop and, and Morton. So it is what it is. And mm -hmm. I thank him for uh, his time in office and uh, the things that he accomplished. Um, I ain't looking for nothing else. And he left the city of Wilmington yeah. a better place right. and for others to grow from those initiatives. Right. So Naila, you were behind the scenes as you said, I met you when I came in to start working and volunteering with the Spiritual Revival Hours. So by serendipity, I got caught up in this campaign. <laughs> I heard him speak when he would come to the shows and I was so inspired and then I had to host one of those shows and uh, I remember because the mayor looked at me because I would come in at 7 a.m. and I was working three jobs so I would come in dressed you know ready to go get up in 7 a.m. in the morning I looked a mess and when I told him I was going to interview a show he looked at me he says you're, you're doing the interview he was probably thinking this girl look crazy but I did transform and we came back and when I heard the responses to the questions that were being asked I too jumped on board, so we got to work together. So tell us a little bit from your eyes how you saw all this evolving. Well, um, to be honest, you know, I'd been working with um, Reverend Twinby Brown at that point for probably about since about '89, and um, he was he would always try to you know he would kind of pull me into whatever was going on. I didn't live in the city; I actually lived in the county. So whoever was running in the city, I wasn't able to vote for them. But because of Reverend Brown's involvement, he was really getting me involved from the political side. Um, I got to hear, you know, what what uh, Mayor Stills' platform was and what he, you know, planned to do. And, and just like Bishop Morton said, I, I was kind of politically, um, like, sort of, um, I was in the, in the no man's land, you know, I, I didn't get involved in politics. And it wasn't until, you know, I got older that I realized it was important to get involved. But because of Reverend Brown's involvement, and because I had a desktop publishing business, he got he he, he said, "Listen, you can you can do some work for us. You can do flyers." So I started creating um, promos and flyers and things that Reverend Brown would ask me to do, and basically, you know, also getting on the show and and supporting his candidacy. But it wasn't you know for me, um, I was like, I can't vote. You know, because I'm I'm a county resident, so I just did my background work, and then you were voting with the work with your volunteerism. <laughs> probably, 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 and uh, but I didn't realize it was setting me up for for other things, and it you know it really kind of set me up for you know a lot of other things that happened in my life as a result of my involvement with not only Reverend Brown but with with our our first barrier breaker, <laughs> the Mayor so Sills. I remember that you were his administrative assistant. That's office we, manager. Office manager was my okay. title. <laughs> well, now they call it. They want to give administrative. They, you know, the bigger yeah. words. But so you were the office manager, the office manager, and you were his right hand in the office. That's right. when I recall. I actually came in as a temp. I actually, I actually came in. Like I said, I didn't live in the city. Um, his, uh, uh, I guess, his, who, what do we call him now? <laughs> Personnel director was Wayne mm -hmm. Cross, right? Mm -hmm. And I knew Wayne, and uh, I think it was the night of the inauguration. Wayne gave me a call, and again, I didn't live in the city, and he's like, Nayula, because I was in between, kind of, I was getting mm -hmm. ready to leave for working for um, Reverend uh, Otis Hare, Dr. Harry. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. were laying me off. <laughs> and so he called me, and he says, we need um, a, a temp. 
in the mayor's office uh, as an office manager while he, you know, we go through the hiring process yeah. to get a, to, to get an office manager. So he was paying seven more dollars an hour than the job I was leaving. And I was like, sure, I'll take it because the job is going to be over in two weeks anyway. And so he gave me an opportunity to actually be the first. And then I said, I think I said to you, Mayor Sills, um, I wrote this grandiose letter. I, I knew there were a lot of people vying for the position. And I was like, I don't really want to leave here. So I wrote him a letter. And I don't know if he remembers that. And uh, basically in the letter, I, I told him that this was a divine connection between us, and that he had never been a mayor and I had never been an office manager. <laughs> and uh, I gave him this letter and I said, I'm getting ready to get fired from my temp job. I mean, from his job, because I, I think I was a little bit more bolder than I thought I should be. And so I remember after putting that letter on his desk, and then um, I think it was maybe the next day or something like that one day, he, he called me in and he said, uh, Nayla, you got the job. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he said to me, and he said to me, uh, how much do you want to, how much do you want to, uh, you know, what is your salary? What, what salary is your expectation, your salary expectation? And I was sort of like, blah, 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 blah. so uh -huh. went home to my husband and I said, I want to make X, Y, Z. When he said it to me, I cut it by, down by $3,000. I, I mean, he just, I was like, I can't tell him this. And I knew he was divinely connected because the very next day he said to me, he wrote a piece of paper down and he said, this is going to, um, to, to Wayne. He said, this is what your starting salary would be. And it was exactly, exactly the same exactly what I had spoken. Yeah. And I knew it was a divine connection yeah. then. I, I knew it was. And from that position, I mean, your life evolved. It did. And, um, it did. I just remember that that campaign was so grassroots. I mean, we yeah, got everybody was. involved. Yes, it was it knocking was. on doors. It was everything you needed to do. And I'll piggyback on that because um, after doing the television show, one of the things that sticks with me is mm -hmm. Mayor Sills came up to me. Well, he wasn't mayor there yet. He said, you know, I was impressed with your intelligence, your eloquence, and your elegance. And that just really meant a lot to yeah. me, you know, considering yeah. everything I was doing, getting up at seven in the morning to be at yeah. that TV show. And we did all of that. It never came, dawned on me to ask for a job until I, my good friend, Benny Dalton, said, you should go and ask the mayor for a job. You worked on his campaign. So I did. I showed up to his house, you know, again, in sweat, sweatpants, sweatshirt to drop off a resume. And he invited me in. I'm like, oh, my God, I look atrocious. And then he proceeded <laughs> to look at my resume. And he said, I only have one position left. Most of the positions have been given out. He said, and that's the position of receptionist. And you're overqualified for that. Okay. So I had to talk myself into a job. So I said okay. to him, you're the first African-American mayor. Everybody's going to be calling your office. Yeah. And the first impressions are the lasting impressions. Yeah. So best that they get the best impression at the front desk. And that should would be through me. Yeah. And he agreed. And he said, but he promised me he would... Um, promote me as soon as something right. was available and three months later I became the special events coordinator so with that we're going to end this segment and we're going to return with the esteemed Dr. Reverend Twin B. Brown who is now going to give us his take on how the spiritual revival hours were very instrumental in the voter registration to helping Mayor Sills get to where he got and where we are today and I too want to give my personal testimony as to how I am where I am because it's on the shoulders of the greats that we stand upon. And we'll return shortly. I just want to say something that uh, I once heard Joe Biden say, and it said, uh, flattery won't hurt you if you don't inhale. <laughs> You're going to get a lot of flattery today. So hold your breath. <laughs> so, some of you know my wife, Martha. We uh, Just before I left the house, uh, Mayor, she said, where are you going? And I said, I'm uh, going uh, into town and I'm going to have an unveiling of a statue of former Mayor Jim Sills. And she says, they're not going to name anything after him, are they? are they? And I said, well, they already have. And they said, well, she said, what's been named after you? I said, nothing. <laughs> she said, how about that combined water sewer overflow under the city of Wilmington? <laughs> it's still there and it bears my name. You got yourself a bridge, now a statue. So this is not right. I've been elected 14 times statewide, nobody, anybody in history, and I have nothing. 10 years ago, we raised $10 million to overhaul the Wilmington train station, make it shine on its 100th anniversary. They named after Joe Biden. I get no respect. 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one of the two best governors ever to serve the state of Delaware, John Carney. I don't know what he had for breakfast, <laughs> but I want some of that. Well, Senator, you can go home and tell Martha that there's a bridge now that's off the list and a corner where a statue's going to be that's off the list as well. Martha and, and TC seem to be fixated on that. What's, what are they going to name after Tom <laughs> after he goes? And by the way, by the way, uh, you all can see Tom Carper perform at the Queen on Saturdays. <clears throat> you get there before six, you don't have to pay the cover charge. Great to see Julie. How are you, babe? Nice to see you. I was going nowhere as governor until we hired her. I tell you, you and Evelyn raised three kids that anybody would be proud to, to call their, uh, their own. And uh, when, uh, when I was privileged to be governor, the, the eight years, if I'm not mistaken, you were a mayor for those eight years. And we had an opportunity to work on a bunch of stuff together, including and Mike Prezik got involved. We hired Mike Prezik to, to, to help do the, uh, the riverfront, transform to really just an industrial wasteland where uh, nothing, not, nobody went there, nobody, nothing grew, nobody lived there, transformed it into what it is to today. Took a part of Wilmington that was going down, going down, broke, not enough money to put into the, the, to anything. And with the help of the legislature and all, Mayor's uh, guidance and, and, uh, and support, we transformed in the top banana port in America, the Port of Wilmington. Let's hear it for the Port of Wilmington. <laughs> One of the things that I re remember Jim Sill saying to me when I was governor, he said, in order for Delaware to be successful, Wilmington has to be successful. Think about that. In order for Delaware to be successful, Wilmington has to be successful. And uh, he and I worked uh, for eight years together to try to make sure that both the state of Delaware and the city of Wilmington were successful. And they both are successful today, I think far more successful than they otherwise would have been because of his leadership. I, uh, a lot of times I like to quote other people. Uh, today I'm going to quote myself. <laughs> I was looking for something great. To, about, to like a quote on talking about your leadership, Mayor. And I said, why don't I just write something? And maybe this will make me famous too. We'll see, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. But it goes something like this. Leaders are humble, not haughty. They have the heart of a servant. They understand that their job is to serve, not to be served. Leaders have the courage to stay out of step when everyone else is marching to the wrong tune Leaders unite, not divide. They build bridges, not walls. Leaders surround themselves with the best people they can find. And when their team does well, the leader gives the credit to his or her team. When the team falls short, the leader takes the blame. Leaders don't build themselves up by bringing others down. Leaders are aspirational. They appeal to our better angels. As Albert Camus once said that leaders are purveyors of hope. Think of that. Purveyors of hope. And he was right. And finally, leaders always seek to do what's right, not what is easy or expedient. Leaders treat other people the way they want to be treated. They focus on excellence in everything they do. If it isn't perfect, let's make it better. And finally, when leaders know they are right, they never, never, never give up. Jim Sills never gave up was an inspi inspiration to me and to many that are here and many that have gone on in, in the past. Thank you for being our leader. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being a great inspiration to all of us. Mayor, congratulations. It's good to be here to join with uh, yourself and a lot of other people I'm sure who have been on this program or who are scheduled to come on to say thanks to uh, Reverend Brown. I think of Reverend Brown uh, as probably one of the most underrated leaders in this community. Um, people tend to think of Reverend Brown I think too often uh, 
as a religious leader that he has played in giving leadership to the community. Um, and, and I need to be clear about what I mean when I say that. He hasn't been, you know, he hasn't been elected to a position and they have incentive as a result of learning of what's happening in the community. They have more incentive to participate, more incentive to be involved. Uh, they have more incentive to participate in the electoral process. Uh, as you know, I was um, first elected as mayor in 1993. And to a large extent, I was elected because of the the work that Reverend Brown did in getting people out to vote. closer to voting season, let us remind you all that this is an important election in which will affect the lives of minorities for years to come. So it is imperative that if you are of age and qualified to vote, you must do so and encourage others to do the same. The only thing that you have equal to the president is your vote. And remember that when you vote, vote for the person and not the party. For further information, call 302-287-4413. Help me, help me, help me, hold me, help help me. me. I'm Shanae Darby inviting you to consider what better way to celebrate Black History Month than to support a legend of over 50 plus years of dedicated, committed services to the community Dr. Benjamin Twinby Brown and Community Communications Corporations introduced Internet Cable to Wilmington and Newcastle County. It is also the creator of Lease Access TV programming you now enjoy here on Channel 28. It is the godfather of the annual Thanksgiving, Christmas dinner, and turkey giveaways to the community for over 40 years. One of the founding members of the Minister's Action Councils, known as IMAC, conducted the largest successful voter education and registration drive ever in our county. For over 42 years, conducted studio and on-site hands-on video workshops for youth and adults. Created the longest airing local cable, TV programming, and many more broadcasting entities. He is still active and productive to this day. Oh, what a legacy. If you would like to support Dr. Benjamin Twinby Brown and Community Communications Corporation, contact us at 302-287-4413. If your call is not answered, please leave a clear message carefully stating your name, an email address and detailing information will be emailed to you promptly. Welcome back to the Spiritual Revival Hours. And now in this segment, as we are paying tribute to Dr. Mayor H. S James, James H. Sills Jr., we have with us the Dr. Reverend Twinby Brown, who's gonna talk about the actual grassroots movement and how the voter registration and just bringing everyone together, including the ministers, helped to get Mayor Sills elected. 
Well, I appreciate you being here today with one of my That's students. Fun. You're doing an excellent job. And the rest of them, my good friend over there, Bishop Morton. Uh, during those times, uh, a lot of pressure was in the community so far as getting people to register and vote. So I, I, I was determined to that that shouldn't happen and wasn't going to happen anymore. So we started putting on voter education and voter education drive. And uh, we got the ministers involved. I'm one of the founding members of the uh, Act, IMAC. And so we had the ministers involved and all that. So I, I uh, launched the largest voter registration, voter education drive ever happened in Wilmington and Newcastle County. Uh, uh, let's, let's go a little further than that. Uh, I was invited to Jim Seals' house over on Lumber Street to talk with him after the campaign started, he said he wanted to talk to me. So I went over there and said uh, two or three hours and talking about how I could help his campaign. That was a very interesting conversation. That's when I met his lovely wife, and uh, she was one of my supporters. Uh, and there are several things in my life come from Evelyn Seals that helped me to go when I was about to give up on a whole lot of things. Every time I would see her, she would encourage me to go on. So we got into voter education, voter registration, and Bishop Morton was a part of everything that I was doing in the community. I used to go up to the office and sit in there sometimes with my head down and all that. And she said to me one day, she said, a prophet is not honored in his own home girl town. Sometimes you got to get out and go. So that's, that's when I started on the weekend uh, letting you and others take over the TV program. And I would go to Detroit, Michigan, where my brother was, and just try to run all over the place. So it was very interesting. But that was the largest, we organized the largest voter education, voter registration drive ever happened uh, in the city of Wilmington in Newcastle County. And, and let's talk about how key Channel 28 and the Spiritual Reviver Hours were in getting the word out. Well, we would have the different ministers come on. Uh, Bishop Morton was one of the ones. She's a, uh, she, she was a part of the workshop. Uh, she, don't, she don't want to own up to it, but she was a part of the workshop because everything that I was involved in, the dinners, we served dinners from her church in Brandywine Trinity. There were so many things involved in getting people involved into voter education and voter registration. I was just one of the instigators, and we had the platform here on Channel 28. But there are so many people we rallied the community around. When she talks about going door to door with a dungarees all or whatever, that was a fact. Sometimes I didn't know who she was. <laughs> she was street. incognito. But, but but all of those things played a part in helping to arouse the community in getting Jim Seals elected. And Mayor Seals, you wanted to comment on what did you feel was some of the key factors and the important things that helped to get you elected? Well, I think I should point out that there was some skepticism in the community about running for mayor in the Democratic primary election. We have a history in Wilmington of black folks often not coming out to vote in the primary elections. We generally come out in great numbers in the general election, but in the primary election, we have a history of not coming out in great numbers. So I had some skepticism because of the reputation that we had in Wilmington about black folks not coming out to vote in the primary election. Uh, but as it turned out, one of the primary reasons that I got elected was because of the support I got from the black ministers, including Reverend Morton, uh, Reverend Wright, Reverend uh, Bishop Weeks, and a number of other black ministers who came out to support me and helped me to raise money through the churches, helped me to get uh, connected with Twinby Brown and other ministers to spread the word word about the importance of people coming out to vote in the primary election. It, it's important to point out one of the major reasons that I got elected in the 1992 primary elect, election 
was because of the support I got from the black ministers. And I want to give due recognition to that fact. It was a true grassroots campaign. And I remember that when I came on board, there was a group called Latinos for Sills and the Hispanic community also banded together oh. to help get you elected. And you were one of the few uh, politicians who, well, persons at that time who really took time and effort to reach out into the Latin community. And you made promises and you kept them. You brought in and made history by bringing the third most uh, highest position in the city, public safety director. You got Dr. Jaime Figueras. You brought in Damalier Molina as the, as the commissioner of LNI. You brought me in as your receptionist and then I became the special events coordinator. So you kept your promises and the community stood with you. So it was a true grassroots campaign. Um, Mark, is it you? You were very young then when when all this happened. You know, what would you say when you see the accomplishments? What accomplishments do you feel the most proud of, or you feel are the highlights of your father's career? Uh, well, and chime in, Mayor Sills, too, if you think of some things that you know well, you're the most proudest that you accomplish as mayor. Well, um, I'm pretty much proud of my whole dad's career. Um, of course, being mayor is a great honor, but. I feel as though my whole dad's my my dad's whole career was a uh, pretty much outstanding, so I would say everything he's done's been outstanding. He's just been a, a great leader. Every position of leadership he's had in this community, he's just been outstanding. I mean, he's been. I mean, just tremendous. He has. He's made an impact yeah. on all our lives. Yeah. And I know that yeah. as you continue your work at yes. working over at Howard High School, that yes. we see you as a young leader as well and following yes. your father's footsteps as well as your brother and Julie, yes. who we would be remiss to mention how involved she was with the statue and how everything was plotted and planned between uh, your son, uh, uh, James the Third, your sister, Julie, and of course yourself, and uh, Stephanie T. Bolden, let's not leave her out, and Senator Brown. We're so grateful for that um, for that uh, recognition. Mayor Sills, are there a few things you might wanna highlight that you did during you know your time as mayor that you're the most proud of? Mayor Krasicki did mention how you were how everything started with you, the revitalization of Wilmington. I was so happy to hear that, to give you credit where credit is due. But let's talk, you know, in your words. Well, um, I'm most proud of the fact that we got a number of corporate and business entities to look at the city of Wilmington in a different way, to have greater confidence in Wilmington and greater desire to move to Wilmington. Uh, MBNA chose to move its entire corporate yes. headquarters yep. from Newcastle County into Wilmington. We got Wilmington Trust to build a new uh, headquarters in Wilmington and expand its membership. We've got uh, Bank of Delaware to build a new building in Wilmington and expand its employment base. Uh, we got um, a number of corporate entities to spend more money. We were able to get the city wage tax income increased by 50% as a result of more business firms moving into Wilmington and having a greater sense of confidence in Wilmington. I feel that the effort that we made to convince corporate firms to look at Wilmington differently and to move into the city to have confidence in our growth and development uh, was one of the major achievements that I felt we were able to uh, bring about. In Most Wilmington. definitely. We can all agree to that. And I remember the story that uh, Charlie Cawley told at your um, retirement um, when he had that special party for you, that he said, you drove up to Christiana. You didn't have him come to your office. And that really made an impact on him. And he loved you and your humility. And that was the start of the re revitalization of Wilmington. And I'd be remiss, considering that I worked in your cultural affairs office with Valerie Trammell, if I didn't mention the fact that we had and hosted the biggest events in the city of Wilmington, which also generated income for the city because people came you know, with Clifford Brown. They stayed in the hotels. They spent money. They were consumers.
I know we're going to have to wrap it up pretty soon. So I want to give our guests just the last opportunity. If there's anything else you would like to say, I am going to close it out with a quick my personal experience where I am now, and I want to close with a poem that I dedicated to you many, many years ago because of your inspiration to me. Let's, uh, with our guests, uh, our, the person who, our host, who brought us here today, Dr. Well, Brown. Well, Maria, I, I just want to say that I worked for the administration, and uh, in working for the administration, you, uh, Edwina Bell, and Naila Gilliam came up through the administration through me. You were students of mine during that time, and uh, it was a great relationship. Uh, the mayor had his own TV program through me. I was a communication specialist for his office. So it was a wonderful time. And as I said, I've become very close to this family the, doing the voter registration and the voter education. It wasn't the day that I didn't communicate with him. He never hesitated from asking me, what are we going to do next? Uh, he was down regular on the air, coming on the air on a regular basis. So it was a wonderful experience for me, and I'm just happy to be able to have a platform that we can give him flowers while he yet lives. And uh, there, for those who didn't, was not able to see uh, the unveiling of the statue, well, that will be a part of this program on this Sunday. Mother, uh, Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Mother's, Mother's Day. Mother's Day will be a part of the program on today. And I know we're running out of time, and I want to give um, Bishop Morton any last words you'd like it to say? It just amazes me <laughs> that at 91, he even remembers what he has <laughs> done. He does remember. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Sills. God bless you. Well. And I just want to say that for me, I remember when he hired me as receptionist, I went above and beyond. I would go to all the community meetings, and if it was in the Latin community, I did the translation of you know information, and um, I would go to the city council meetings. I was sitting in one of those meetings, and I just started thinking about the whole, what the mayor is and who he represents, and I came up and I wrote this poem, which I'm going to close out with. But I just want to say that as the first Hispanic woman elected to office uh, as a city council member at large, that it's Dr. James H. Sills Jr. that inspired me, this young woman, because I said, you know, I want to walk in his footsteps. I want to do for the Latin community what he did for the African American community. So Mayor Sills, I can honestly say that I am here today doing what I do because of you and your inspiration. I love you. You've always treated me like a daughter, like I'm part of the family. I feel like I'm part of the family. Thank you to everyone who made that special event uh, possible. So I'm going to close the segment with your permission to read the, the poem that I wrote for you, and it's called The Heartbeat of the City. Where does the heartbeat of the city lie? Is it in its stocks and bonds that one relies to know a city's wealth? Is it in the corporations and banks and edifices that stand so tall within their marble walls? Does this depict a city's health? Do we look to the streets and in the neighborhoods to find the heartbeat of what is bad and what is good? Maybe the heartbeat can be found as drops of blood fall upon the ground. Or do we search among the people and peer into their eyes? Will we see the pain and sorrow that in their heart abides? Maybe the children are the chosen ones who hold the heartbeat in their hands. Their smiling faces filled with joy, the world is left at their command. The heartbeat may just live in all of these, for it does not matter, rich or poor, your color or your race. The heartbeat of the city lies within the one who sets the pace. You are that pulse, you are the vein that in the city's heartbeat reigns. And this was written in 1993 and dedicated to Mayor Sills. So we thank you for joining us here at the Spiritual Revival Hours. Our guests, Bishop Morton, Reverend Twinby Brown, Naila Gilliam, Mark Sills, and of course, our honored guest, Dr. James H. Sills, Jr., the first African-American mayor in the city of Wilmington. Thank you. Thank for you very us. much for this honor. You're most welcome.